Welcome back to Girl Talk. We are here at Michael Anthony's Presentation Kitchen with Chef Michael Serafasi. And we are excited because another recipe of the month, Jane Jude and Alec McNair from the Low Country Report have joined us and we are hungry and ready to see what you've got to prepare good. for us it this time around. Good. It does. All right, today girls, we're gonna do a uh, local fish, cobia. Ooh, that but is with an Italian uh, animal. But with an Italian preparation, Italian ingredients. Time preparation, we're gonna do it piccata style, scalpini okay. of cobia, piccata style. Where I take the cobia, slice into little scallops, and then pound it. One thing I found out about the cobia is, um, like Tom was saying earlier, it is a very dry fish. It needs to be dealt with a little bit different than, you know, other fish. You just can't saute it, put it in the oven for five or ten minutes. You've already it pounded that. Arvin, pound it nice and th paper thin in this, pounded it. If it's dry and tough, why Kobe do so many is, people love it so much? Um, why is it so popular in this area this I time of year? I don't know. Cobia cannot be dealt with mo like other fish. It gets very dry in the oven. It's just temperamental. So this fish, sauteing it on both sides and simmering a little bit of lemon juice and white wine, a little bit of cream and butter, never goes in the oven. Okay. A little cream and butter would be never nice, and, nice and moist and very soft. It's one of the best selling fish we have on the menu right now, when it's in season and when it's available. And when it's prepared properly. Well, so how, how thick were those scallopini before you pounded them? About like an inch and a half, two inches, and I pounded oh, so it. You, yeah. pounded, wow. you can't pound it too thin because it'll shatter because it's fish. You can you can treat it almost like meat by pounding it, but of course you can't pound it like a piece of veal or beef or lamb. But you would use right? the flat side of the mallet, not the one with the teeth. Always the flat side, never the right. teeth. The teeth is for tenderizing. Okay. And of course, we're using grapeseed oil so the fish gets nice and golden brown. I always think about that when I watch other cooking shows when they're doing olive oil, it's like, uh uh, grapes. Grape olive oil is the best oil in the world for seasoning and flavoring. Sauteing it, if you have a chance, if it burns, it has the most awful flavor in the world. And you destroy very high quality olive oil with heat. Right. Grapes oil is meant yeah. to be heated very high. Huh. A little salt, a little pepper. Which you just ground. And then here I'm going to serve it with a little bit of wilted spinach, nothing oh, fancy, no, no nice. big elaborate. And garlic, right? I saw garlic in spinach, there. Spinach, garlic. Uh, a little bit of butter and olive oil. Once the fish gets golden brown both sides, you can see using grapes and oil, you don't stick, the fish doesn't burn, and it gets nice and golden brown. See? Golden brown and delicious. And you want just that little opaque color to it? Just like a golden brown, like that. I mean, some fish will brown a little bit more than others. Kobe will get like that. Perfect. Okay. And then even though grapes and oil is the best oil in the world for you, that's really good for you, I'm gonna get rid of some of that oil. A little bit. Can I get free seed oil right at the grocery store? Or? Uh, Michael Anthony's downstairs, aisle seven, next okay. to the oils. That's okay. right. In their new <laughs> retail center, which you have to check out. A little bit of garlic. Fresh lemon Ooh. juice. Get that citrus going. A little bit of white wine. Yeah, wow. and a little facial while and you're then doing a it. little bit of broth. Chicken broth? Vegetable broth. Vegetable. Vegetable if you're working broth. with meats, fine. Use chicken, but using, working with fish, use a vegetable broth. Let it simmer for about a minute or so. We'll add a little bit of cream to create the sauce. A little bit of butter for richness and smoothness. Done. Good to go. And just serve with the... Wilted spinach. Wilted, yep. Wilted spinach. With a little bit of chiffonade of parsley. Re recipe will be available on whhitv.com, as always, with the other recipes we've got online there, too. And a caper or two. A few, there they come. A few Sicilian That's capers. A few. Always use the ones from Sicily. Oh, it smells a little fabulous. Fabulous. A little bit more in the picante style, like a little bit more, a little spice, and a little bit of crushed red pepper, just a little bit. Now, here's where we go bad. Uh -oh. But not much, though. Dun, dun, dun. The just cream. a little bit of heavy cream. <laughs> That was, that was easily a quarter of a cup, that's okay. After this comes to the boil, starts to simmer a little bit more, it gets kind of thick. I'll put a little bit of butter, to make the sauce nice and smooth, clean. almost like a beurre blanc, but made in the pan. And ready. Done. And you serve a pasta with that, or just? just no. Just with Always a light vegetable. Wilted spinach, maybe some steamed asparagus, a puree of potato if you like. Lovely. Now my sauce is just about, I don't want my cream to be thin. I still want to be a little thickness to it. Then I add my butter. So it's so nice that you're taking like the again those seasonal ingredients in the area and, and always, giving it yeah. your special touch. Italian chefs especially always believe in use what's available. Like right now we're using chanterelles in the kitchen. Oh. Um, you know we have fresh watermelon on the menu. So don't use watermelon in January. Don't use chanterelles right. in April. Use them you know when they are. I know you can find almost all the ingredients throughout the world now, 
you know, between South America. But they've had a long ride sometimes. Long yeah. ride, and the season for peaches is, you know, in two months. Right. Not three months ago. We've got about a minute left. And you see here how my butter Beautiful. is not melting. It's actually creating just, a sauce. Just, right, just, just, wow, that looks fabulous. Like a blanc kind of A little thing. bit. And don't forget, Chef Michael has classes going on every week, both hands-on cooking classes and also demonstration classes. And what a so. great place this is for oh, that. You can see so fabulous. well. fabulous. Not only a great restaurant, but this whole presentation kitchen, it really lends itself to, to learning a little bit more about all the great things. And the things chef's a fairly creating. nice guy. Yes, he is. <laughs> he's a good guy, too. Sometimes, sometimes. I, I talented. Him, I, I told him I was going to make cream and mushroom soup over uh, chicken, and he told me I better take the <laughs> class. So now we're gonna... we have all kinds of classes, beginner level. That, that would be me. With a little more salt to finish my sauce. Wow. It's gorgeous. As soon as your sauce is nice and smooth. See, just glossy. See, it's just gorgeous. Kind of like and that's all the butter does. Add a nice shine and smoothness. Wow. And there we have local cobia. Picata oh. with a little bit of wilted spinach. That's beautiful. Thank you, Chef Michael. As always, great recipes here at Michael Anthony's and again, available online. Thanks for joining us here on Girl Talk. We're going to dig Please. in. We'll see you next time. Voila. Okay. Oh.